On April 27, 2019, HSL Esports headed into their Open Division quarter-final as they hoped to battle their way back into EU contenders after a short appearance at the end of 2018. They had a promising roster which included the German main tank Hadi, who is now a member of the British Hurricane, and they were just a couple of steps away from qualifying themselves for contenders trials. However, for their quarter-final opponent, they drew a team that was starting to get some attention placed upon them as a so-called team of one tricks, and that was Clock Vendetta. A convincing 3-0 defeat here, followed by a further loss in the losers bracket, lulled them out of the open division in 7th place, seemingly ending their EU contenders dream of season 2. So how did this team, that looked down and out, come back less than 4 months later to win it all in the final against Team Giganti last night? Of course, the best place to start would be to explain how HSL Esports even qualified for the second season of EU contenders in the first place. Well, on June 10th, just three days before their first scheduled match, the HSL Esports organisation signed the one-point roster to play under the HSL Esports name. They've been consistent regulars in EU contenders since the middle of 2018, just without finding much meaningful success outside reaching the semi-finals for the third 2018 European contender season. Only one member of the one-point roster stayed when the team was acquired, which was the Danish support player Scaler. With him at first, they surrounded him with other Danish players, Zapre and Fischer at DPS, as well as Henningsen at main tank, whilst the Russian flex tank Schau and French support Ascroft rounded out the rest of his side. It would be fair to say that with the European Big Three of the Angry Titans, British Hurricane and Team Giganti, alongside the highly anticipated Glock with Vendetta, expectations for HSL Esports were not too high with GOATs remaining in the meta, especially seeing as the only two players in the team to have recently played alongside each other, Chow and Ascroft, had come from the Eternal Academy, who had disappointingly crashed out of contenders the season prior and failed to re-qualify through trials. That said, heading into their first match of the season, they made sure the line roared. Many eyes were on their opening series, but not to see HSL Esports. Instead, it was so that most people could witness Claude Vendetta's contenders' debut. HSL Esports' old adversary, who had hit the first nail into the coffin of their open division run. What was interesting, though, was how well they started, opting into running some DPS compositions of their own instead of just goats against the hyped up clockwork comp. Fisher, Chow, and Zapray, primarily on May, Sombra, and Widowmaker, initially took the upper hand showing off their skill on the heroes and winning the majority of the team fights at the beginning of the match, taking them 2-0 up at halftime. Eventually, Claude Vendetta worked their way back into the game and in growing confidence took the next two maps to level the series to take it to a map 5 on Ilios. But channeling their first half performance, particularly on DPS, HSL Esports regained control to stop the reverse sweep and win their first match in the second 2019 season of UU Contenders 3-2. Despite this great start to the season, the team had to say goodbye to their flex support player, Scaler as he moved on to the Uprising Academy in North America, so the team welcomed Ding, a fellow Dane, into the site to replace him only a few days before their next match. This was against Young and Beautiful, but it didn't go quite to plan, playing more goats throughout the contest, despite some nice shatter plays from Henningsen. The team started to struggle a bit with some inconsistent coordination, but was punished efficiently, resulting in a 3-1 defeat. They bounced back from this with back-to-back 3-1 victories in the next couple of weeks over Shoot's Money Crew and Sank some Morning Stars, in which the running of their goats compositions got noticeably better whilst the occasional showing their DPS comps on Assault continued to look quite good. But despite this decent run of form, they kind of slid under the radar, with few paying much attention to their solid start. HSL Esports were in a good position at this point, with wins over perceivably weaker sites and a 3-1 record, but they now face a tough test down the stretch against a big three that will truly test their credentials. Going up against one of the strongest teams in EU contenders at the time, and Team Giganti, was always going to be a tough ask, but at least for the first half, the Lions put up a very good fight losing control at 99-99% to thanks to a massive shatter from Milky Man before biting back with a great performance of Volskaya, with HSL Esports DPS comps again showing their strength. It might have fallen a pass in the second half as they eventually ended up on the end of a 3-1 loss, but it really showed for the first time that HSL Esports were not a team to take lightly, and if they performed well, they could challenge the very best who were now at the top of EU contenders' standings. At the same time, there seemed to be a trending revolution sweeping through EU contenders, Following the success of Coral Vendetta, and now the DPS comps of the Shanghai Dragons in the Overwatch League, teams stopped running GOATs as much as they'd used to, and instead ran more bunker-style DPS compositions. This played perfectly into the hands of HSL Esports, who had shown throughout the season that on heroes like Hanzo, Mei, Reaper, and Widow, Zapri and Fisher could pop off, while Shao continued to make his presence known on Diva, Torbjorn, and Roadhog, with some clutch kills in crucial moments of teamfights. In a gruelling back-and-forth contest, they eventually got the best of the Angry Titans 3-2, in their penultimate match of the season, the key moment being their insane defensive hold at the end of Dorado, before finishing the season in style with a strong 3-1 win over the British Hurricane. As the regular season matches came to a close, quietly, 
HSL Esports have propelled themselves to third in the table, with a 5 and 2 record, only missing out on second to clock with Vendetta through map differential. It had been an excellent season so far for them, but all eyes and attention was on the top two, Team Giganti and Claude Vendetta, who most people assumed, including myself, would be the ones to reach the playoff final and relive their epic final week encounter for Europe's only spot at the gauntlet. But with 2-2-2 on the horizon and an immense momentum around the DPS displays, the Lions hoped to quietly pounce from the shadows and cap the top two off guard. They first had to contend with Samson Morningstars in the quarterfinals and went down a map early, but soon they were able to find their groove with the team looking incredibly comfortable within the new 2-2-2 rollock to win the next three maps and book their semi-final match against Claude with Vendetta. This was going to be the big one. Again, when it mattered most, they were facing arguably their biggest rivals. Yes, HSL Esports had taken victory at the beginning of the season, but this was still the team that from an organisation point of view, three months earlier derailed their open division conquest, and this was a series that was truly for all the marbles. At first, it went disastrously. Coming off their bite, Mugmanta, Ricky and Moose dominated the early exchanges, powering Clockwork Vendetta to a 2-0 map lead at the half. The writing seemed to be on the wall, but the Lions were not out of it yet. Henningsen and Chow put on a clinic in the second half, really getting the better of their battle against Minimi and Moose. Ascroft and Ding, meanwhile, whilst always been consistent supports for the side, started to make a major impact themselves, with pickoffs on Baptiste and Zenyatta, with Ascroft in particular getting a massive amount of value out of his ultimates. Zapri and Fisher also started playing much better themselves on May and Reaper on the Cree, standing their ground against the onslaught from the man possessed Monk Mutter, who looked to carry his side kicking and screaming into the finals. Winning Hollywood, HSL Esports now needs to win Dorado to take us to a map 5, but despite finishing the map on their first attack, their time was better by Clock Vendetta, and on their second attack, they could only make it to the end of the first section. The Lions valiantly held for as long as they could, but with a team fight win for Clock Vendetta and an ultimate advantage in their favour, it seemed destined that HSL Esports would now fall. Yet with overtime just about to start, Zapri made a massive play with a nano from Ding, killing Mei as she used her Blizzard, cancelling it winning H Silver team fight and consequently Dorado, taking us to a map 5. All the momentum was now with them, as Clockwork Vendetta fell apart. HLA Esports pounced upon every opportunity they were given. With a great all-round performance, they convincingly took both maps of Bazan to complete the reverse sweep and book their place in the EU Contenders final, finally getting true retribution for their Open Division exit three months earlier. With fantastic commentary throughout from Jaws and Leg Day, this was expected to be a tightly fought affair with Team Giganti coming in as favourites. A close first round just edged in the favour of Giganti, but Fisher soon turned up to play with a dominant display on Hanzo, which helped his side to level up the sun. From here on, HSL's May Reaper comp just seemed to take the initiative and get a lot more value out of their kits and ultimates. Helped by a great performance from Xiao on D.Va, which saw them win the third round 100-0, giving them early map lead in the series. Offences reigned supreme on Volskaya, but HSL was simply the quicker, as despite finishing the map twice each, they got a third attack themselves, with over 3 minutes of time max still remaining and eventually found the picks they needed, which they capitalised on with their ultimates, to win the map and take an extraordinary 2-0 lead in the series. It was a similar story on King's Row, and whilst I thought the whole team were playing outstandingly, Shao stood out to me for his performance throughout the match, always trying to get involved and often getting the first kill in the team fights to keep the momentum with his side. HSL Esports were now 3-0 up in the series, and now needed only one more map to be crowned EU Contenders champions. They stumbled a lit at match point though, as they lost Rialto, but they were not about to let the series slip, convincingly winning Nepal to confirm the match win 4-1, crowning them EU Contenders champions with a fantastic display, with their May Reaper comp simply being cleaner, sharper and more deadly than Gigantes, which proved to be the defining factor in the series' outcome. HLO Esports have been on one hell of a ride since the start of his Contenders season, improving and growing week on week to the success last night that has booked their place at the gauntlet later this year. Each player has contributed massively, with Zapri and Fisher always having an impact at DPS. Henningsen provided a strong foundation at main tank, and Shao popped off at flex tank, whilst Ascroft and Ding have consistently executed their jobs brilliantly with some clutch plays themselves at support. Perhaps we should have known from the very start after they defeated Claude Vendetta in the first game of the season, but these Cubs have certainly grown into full lines that will now hope to roar for Europe at the gauntlet, and surprise a few, which I think they're perfectly capable of doing. And with some of their players looking to showcase their skills on the World Cup stage, with Shao for Team Russia, and Fischer and Henningsen for Team Denmark, it wouldn't surprise me to see a few of their faces pop up in the Overwatch League in 2020, but I wish them the best of luck moving forward and into the gauntlet. And with that, we reach the end of my HSL Esports video, and I'd thank you for watching. If you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter for this continuing competitive Overwatch coverage and content. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.